this skull is not completely human. You see, many years ago, God gave L.A. a mandate, and he told him to study as the days of Noah. Explain what that is and explain what you found out from your studies. Well, Jesus tells us it will be like the days of Noah when he returns. And, of right. course, that points to the fallen angels coming down in Genesis 6, <clears throat> having sex with the women, and the offspring are the Nephilim. And I believe that this right, is a Nephilim, Nephilim skull. Nephilim means gi the giants. Well, that was one of the characteristics. Ah, okay. Later on, I think they became different characteristics. Okay, now, the, these Nephilim, um, these, and, and, you know, I've always wondered, I don't know about you, uh, when you've studied the Bible, you see God says, destroy all the people in Canaan, uh, destroy all the people in Sodom and, and Gomorrah. Why would God not have mercy on any of these people? There's a good reason. Explain. Well, the reason simply is this, that we're dealing with a demonic hybrid known as a Nephilim. I believe there were many different uh, incursions, if you will. Genesis, you mentioned, of course, Sodom and Gomorrah. Later on, when they push into Israel, the land of Canaan, who were there? The Nephilim were there. And the mandate is always the same. Now, now again, the Nephilim were the fallen angels had sex with, the, with human mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. and produced these giants and, and these uh, hybrid, if hybrid, you will. Hybrid, sure. Okay, and, and if God could not get rid of them, they take over the earth. Well, not only that, they would pollute the genome of the Messiah. That's really ah. is the end game, especially in, in Genesis 6 with the mm -hmm. flood. Okay, now you have found some amazing research uh, in newspaper articles from the 1800s and 1900s mm -hmm. about uh, these Nephilim. Tell me about it. Well, I believe that they're Nephilim. We know that 100, 150 years ago, as settlers pushed westward, they found burial mounds. And at first, everyone thought these were Native Americans. Well, they would dig into these mounds, and they would find 9, 10, 11 footers, sometimes with six fingers, double rows of teeth, copper ornaments. These were not in red hair. These were not indigenous Native Americans. Then when you talk to a First Nation Native American, they'll tell you that, oh, no, there was a race of giants that predated us. They were here when we arrived. And I've never heard that. I always heard it was the Native Americans, but this is a, that even the Native American folklore and history talked, tell me one of the things you heard about this from well, Native Americans. Just one of the things, uh, the Paiute tribe, for instance, there was a race of cannibal giants. Um, they were very large, and uh, the, the, the Paiute would fight against these giants. And at, at one point in time, they, they herded them into a cave, and uh, they set the mouth of the cave on fire and they wiped out that tribe of giants. Interestingly enough, that cave still exists today. Tell me about uh, the uh, uh, Smithsonian and the bones that they have, they, they have found of the, what could be the Nephilim. Sure. We, um, we discovered that uh, case after case after case, 9, 10, 11 footers are found, and the Smithsonian shows up. And they confiscate the bones, and they put them in crates, and they're carried away, never to be seen again. And we have case after case after but, case. But, but if I was the Smithsonian, that would be my, my major sure. exhibit. And what, 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 <laughs> what, what could possibly be the reason that it's been taken from public sight? Well, the reason is, um, is, is actually very simple. The Smithsonian adheres to a Darwinian paradigm, a Darwinian worldview. They believe in Darwinism. Anything that comes up against that, anything that comes up against it, must be put aside, uh, dumbed down, just completely cleared off the table. And this, of course, goes against the Darwinian theory, because where did these people come from? It's not the Beringian land bridge, that little, that when the Ice Age and they came across the Bering Strait, that blows that whole theory out of the water. These people came from something else. I believe that the tribes in North America and in South America are the remnants of the Nephilim tribes that Joshua and Caleb pushed out of the Promised Land when they conquered it about 3,500 years but, ago. But wait a second. If they, if they killed all the population, how could they migrate then to they the United States? They didn't kill all the population. It, it would stand to reason as they begin to move in to the Promised Land. The giants see what's happening, that the Israelites, first of all, have the power of the Most High God, and they are annihilating all the tribes. So the Amorites, perhaps, and maybe the Perizzites over here, some of these guys go, we got to get out of here. Some flee northward, and we have a trail, 
that we believe follows that, some flee across the Atlantic Ocean. And the works, workings of um, uh, Thor Heyerdahl, for instance, proved that you could sail just on the currents from Egypt and wind up in South America. But do you know what? There's even greater documentation than that. <laughs> You're going to find out about an entire communication system way before the internet, about uh, architecture that, that no one could have known back then. Uh, when we come back, we'll explain. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Call right now to get L.A. Marzulli's must-read book on the trail of the Nephilim, giant skeletons, and ancient megalithic structures, plus his shocking two DVDs, Watchers 6, and the Cosmic Chess Match. Yours for a donation of $50. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9189. Through his riveting book, which includes over 120 high-quality photos and his two DVDs, you will see unaltered color photos and videos taken in the USA and South America of newly discovered ancient Nephilim skeletons, 10 to 15 feet tall, the hybrid offspring of fallen angels referred to in the book of Genesis. See and read about the giant megalithic stones, over 120 tons each, moved from over 50 miles away during a time in history when such technology was not available, nor is it available today. Learn that it was ancient hybrid giants who moved these massive stones. Learn about the ancient grid, which exists today and will be used by the Antichrist to enslave every human being on the planet. Find out about the discovery of implants in humans during alien abductions, which are supercomputer chips that will change the genetic structure of every person who takes the mark of the beast. Don't miss out on getting L.A. Marzulli's must-read book on the trail of the Nephilim, plus his shocking two DVDs, Watcher 6 and The Cosmic Chess Match. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9189 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. L.A., why do you say these skulls that you are finding out about, uh, especially in Peru and, and the United States, are partially human? Well, this skull here looks, looks sort of human, except, of course, it's elongated. You can see the way it, it, you know, the, the sides of the skull go up. A normal human skull consists of four plates. A frontal plate, and by the way, these are sutures here. A frontal plate, then you would see another suture that would go and split the parietal, which is the center plate, in two pieces. Mm -hmm. Well, and then, of course, the occipital, the rear plate. What you see here is a frontal plate, which has been greatly enlarged, and it's got this very strange ridge bone on top of it. And then, where there should be two parietal plates, there is only one parietal plate. We saw many, many, many skulls down there with these characteristics. We also believe that this is a female skull. The male skulls are about like this, much, much larger, much more robust. Now, you did an, an amazing scientific study of different colors of hair. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Well, the skull, the hair on many of these skulls are red. It's sort of a reddish auburn in color. That shouldn't be there. Why? But according to the Darwinian theory, all these people should have black hair because they came across the Bering Strait 10, 12, 20,000 years ago, whatever. And so these had red hair. But we wanted to see if the hair was dyed. So we took some hair samples, and there's a machine called Raymond spectroscopy. What this does is it shows the molecular structure of each of these hairs. So we took a control sample of normal human hair. We took the red hair <clears throat> from the mummy. And then we took a dyed hair, dyed human hair. Mm -hmm. And then we took a hair from a man who had claimed to have been abducted by aliens and forced to have sex with a hybrid. So we have four hairs. Uh, the control sample went like this on a graph, okay? All the right. human hair just went like this. The dyed sample went like this, right through the roof. But here's where it really gets interesting. And in my opinion, it links what happened in antiquity with what's going on today. The days of Noah, the presence of the fallen angels. The red hair and the hybrid hair track like this over the graph the same way, all over the graph to the very end, then it slid off. Now remember, this hair that came off this skull was about 2,500 years old. So what you're saying is it lines up with not being totally human. Correct. Lines up with the Nephilim Correct. Uh, uh, that the Bible talks about, where the fallen angels had sex with the women mm -hmm. of men. 
Mm -hmm. Now, tell me about the research you're doing in Peru, uh, and especially what you found under the Catholic Church. Well, the, there's these, in, in this one particular place called Waitara, which is about 9,000 feet above sea level, literally in the middle of nowhere. There are these ancient megalithic ruins, and on top of these ruins is built a Catholic uh, help church. Me out. What's a megalithic? I'm sorry. Ruin? Megalithic ruin is, is ancient stonework, very large blocks of stone, and we, we see them all over the world. But what's fascinating about this when you're in the church, it's a Catholic church, and there's icons and statues and all this. But at the base of the church, about to the eight foot level, are these ancient stones which are laid without mortar. And the joinery is so precise, you cannot fit a human hair between the stones. And they are polygonal shape. What I mean by that, many different sided shapes, not one stone is the same. You'd be hard pressed to achieve that type of masonry in today's world. You could do it, but at what expense? And the technology that was done thousands and thousands of years ago, it just, it defies imagination. Here's a people that really didn't have the wheel, as far as we know, yet they're taking these four-ton, 10-ton, 20-ton, and even greater blocks of stone, and the, when they join them, Sid, the sides are completely smooth. How do you move 20-ton, 20 20-ton 20 stones without a wheel? I'll get you thinking a little bit. Absolutely. And I think is a supernatural component to all of this. And this is where I factor in fallen angels. 